don't know. I don't believe in you. I mean, they're pretty good guys. T-Mac and uh, doing a little gardening today as you can see uh, working on my keyhole garden I got that idea from hanging out with them around the cabin boys and uh, tell you what so far I've liked it uh, it's been a little bit of an investment and it will be for some I managed to do a lot of trading and got a lot of what I needed so uh, but basically it's shaped just like this or some of them are round and you can walk in the center of them and do all your weeding standing right there in the center so you ain't got to move around a whole bunch it's just uh, a really cool idea I thought and that way it keeps you and this elevated garden keeps you from having to do a lot of weeding anyway you don't have to do any uh, hoeing nothing like that so I'm really looking forward to it this year well on the sides of my keyhole garden I'm gonna do tomatoes down the side this is a 12 foot by 12 foot with three foot interior beds and a six foot space by eight foot space in the middle that I can walk in and do my gardening around. <clears throat> and you know, I could make it a little tighter if I wanted to, and maybe I will. But uh, you can get these plants usually around your at your local gardening place or wherever. These were uh, four plants for a dollar seventy-seven plus some tax, so that's pretty good. And uh, I done my tomatoes over there. I put nine in that bed. I, I might have got them a little close. I don't know, but you know we'll see. Uh, I hope not. These I'm gonna do not so close. I'm gonna. These are uh, big boys, and I'm gonna give them plenty of space in between. I've only got two plants left besides what I'm growing in seed and they haven't sprouted yet so I got peppers up here uh, those are bell peppers I have a one foot by twelve foot over there that I have uh, jalapenos and uh, banana peppers in uh, that front run up there is one foot by twelve foot bed and it's got uh, cucumbers in it and then the rest of my garden is just in the ground so we'll go over that here in a second I'm gonna get these tomato plants in all right as you've seen earlier well see the way I make these beds is uh, this one here is only six foot right now because I only had enough to get six feet build them as you go if you have to you know sometimes these projects ain't all in one day it's all in what you can afford at that time so I just split this one in half uh, first I put down plastic just two mil plastic doubled up so it's four mil and I run it up on the sides a little bit and that's for my keep my moisture in the garden but also keeps the weeds out 
because then weeds will grow right up through and come out. I see a few pieces of grass, but they probably blew in here. But uh, that crab grass, man, it can get anywhere. There's no place safe, it seems. And it's some tough stuff. But uh, that's what the plastic is. It keeps my water from just running out the bottom. I do want to, you do, if I mean, if, if I wasn't using 2x12s, I'd probably have some kind of drainage in the bottom, some holes poked, just so it doesn't fill up like a pool. But with these, uh, this lumber in here, it's got plenty of cracks in it and holes, and uh, I don't think I have to worry about it flooding. Then I come in with some mulch. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of mulch, I just, whatever mulch is cheapest and I can get a hold of. Uh, this was black mulch, and I put a layer of it about four inches deep in the bottom. Uh, just for mulch tends to hold water better. And, uh, so that's why I put it on top of the plastic and uh, if you're making a wicking garden which is kind of what I'm doing but it's a raised garden but I'm kind of using a wicking garden design a wicking garden you'd have about a foot of mulch and a foot of soil on top of it and you'd have a pipe going down to your mulch and you could just fill that pipe with water and it runs off through that mulch and it wicks up into the roots and you don't have to water your garden as much so I'm kind of basing this on that a little bit. Then I put straw on top of that. Uh, the reason I'm using a straw is because one, it uh, well you can see there's grass growing in it, so I'll probably have to take care of that. But plants seem to grow good with straw in them. It insulates well at the bottom. Keeps every, you know might keep your roots from freezing if you get a nice real cold spell. And I wanted some kind of barrier between the mulch and my soil. I talked to some people and they were. They didn't like the mulch in there because it has oil and it could affect your roots. So, uh, and some people say it's you know any kind of mulch is okay. I'm going to put a little bit of a barrier in there just to keep the two separated, and that's what my straw is for. And then, of course, I use soil the rest of the way. Uh, I got about eight inches of soil in here. Uh, I'd like to have a little more, but you know, like I said maybe next year build these up a little higher it's just kind of a as you go thing as you have the money to of course do I have some more tomatoes out here I've got five across here those are big boys I want them to have plenty of space right behind them I have a small row of asparagus or not asparagus uh, oh okra I've never grown okra before I'm gonna try that then there's a path and that's all beans back there then there's another path and around that trellis I've got squash planted and on the back side of that fence I got cucumbers planted and all along here I got corn mm -hmm. join Team Waff the Outdoors at the 2014 Camo Outdoor Expo held at the MSSU Leggin Platt Center August 16th and 17th near Joplin, Missouri. Once again brought to you by the Camo Crew. For tons more videos go to our YouTube channel Waff the Outdoors. You can also see them at www.waffletheoutdoors.com and be sure to visit our online store. And don't forget to go to Facebook, like us, share us with your friends, and hey, remember it's your God-given duty to manage this land.